Hey everybody, David here, and today I'm going to tell you how to watch Star Wars in chronological order. Why am I doing this? Because I've actually been getting a couple of requests from a video that I did back in 2018 when Solo, a Star Wars story came out that, you know what, since I'm getting a couple of requests from that video to do an updated one, I thought why not? Now, because... You know, placing Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker in the timeline is pretty difficult, I guess. Uh, but to make this one a little bit more different and, uh, and unique, I'll, I'll add the TV shows, which I don't think I talked about in that video back in 2018. So I'll talk about them now. So this will include shows like Star Wars Clone Wars, Rebels, and The Mandalorian in where they fit into the timeline. So if you are somebody that wants to watch all of the Star Wars, the movies and the shows, in chronological order, here you go. So, as usual, I, I, I'll also try not to uh, spoil too much because a lot of people also complain about that in that previous video. That apparently I spoil too much. But I am going to say this. If you are someone that is a Star Wars virgin and has never seen any of the Star Wars movies before, Go and watch the original three films first. I will say there is some things in that movie that should be seen for the first time uh, with just the original trilogy first. Then you go and watch the prequels and then the Disney stuff. Uh, but for the most part, if you are someone that has experienced these movies before but want to have a new fun way of watching it, uh, chronological order is the way I always like watching movies. Uh, I never really use the TV shows in my marathons, but if you want, you know, specifically right now, uh, if you're stuck at home, uh, this is the perfect marathon, I guess, to do right now. It's very simple, and here we go. So starting at the beginning, uh, there we go. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> pay attention. Don't pay attention to that. Okay, here we go. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace takes place 32 BBY. Some people might be wondering, what is BBY? Well, BBY is actually before the Battle of Yavin. It's, it's their version of BC. This is what Star Wars has used for a long time. I know they did an updated one, which is like about the... Uh, something to do with the battle at the end of The Force Awakens, but... The, the original film is where the timeline starts. So if we want to go be back we, we, before the Battle of Yavin, uh, which is the final battle of, you know, where the original film takes place, the final battle in that film. So anything after is called after the Battle of Yavin. So because episode one is a prequel, here we are. Episode one, The Phantom Menace, before the Battle of Yavin, uh, 32 years. Then we travel... 10 years later, and we see Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Uh, this, yes, and um, uh, no spoilers, but moving on, uh, we then go a, a year into the war, because at the end of Clone Wars, the war has begun. So if, if Clone Wars hasn't given you that, if one is called Attack of the Clones, you know that we're in the Clone Wars. So what is the Clone Wars about? You have to find out. But yes, um, there is a way to watch the Clone Wars movie, and the TV show, um, back to back, um, and uh, you you might want to Google what is the correct order to watch the episodes in the movie, uh, because yes, there is a chronological order for all the episodes and the movie, because when the show aired, as well as the movie, uh, they didn't really air in the order that they should have been. A lot of people wonder why, and no, Disney Plus does not put them in chronological order either, so you're going to have to Google it up, because I'm not going to do a whole video about that, uh, and, uh, and and just find the list of how what episodes and the movie, uh, how do they go in order, Because or else you'll be seeing a character die in one episode, and then he's back to life in another. So, believe me, if you want the full experience... Check out the the list. I think IGN or or um, StarWars.com has. It. I don't remember right now. But if you Google how to watch Clone Wars in chronological order, uh, it should come up right away. So there you go. So yes, you watch the movie, and then you watch the TV show. If you don't care about the chronological order, uh, you'll get it more or less. I think it's it doesn't take a genius to figure it out. And then. Uh, you go into Revenge of the Sith. Now, I want to suggest something. After seeing the final four episodes of Clone Wars, I do want to suggest something here. Uh, you might want to... When you get to the last four episodes of Clone Wars, 
watch the first two of the last four first, then watch Revenge of the Sith, and then watch the last two episodes afterwards. And if you wonder, if you're wondering why, if you've seen Clone Wars, you probably want, you know why I'm saying that. But if you if you don't know why, then experience it like that and tell me what you think. I, I I'd be curious uh, to know. Uh, then, so that's in 19 BBY. We then move a couple years later, and we get into Solo, a Star Wars story. This is about a young Han Solo who will eventually look like Harrison Ford one day. Um, it does take place like three years before in the beginning of the movie, but then they say, you know, three years later. So the majority of the movie takes place uh, 10 BBY. Uh, we then move to Star Wars Rebels, which roughly takes place five years before the original film. So that's why 5 BBY is right there, uh, which uh, is the essentially the beginning of the Rebel Alliance. That's why Star Wars Rebels, right? Um, we then move into Rogue One, a Star Wars story, which takes place literally right before, like seconds right before uh, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Uh, so you, you do want to watch those two, Rogue One uh, and A New Hope, back to back. Uh, and you'll understand why once you uh, see them. Uh, we then move forward uh, three years later, two or three years later, roughly, uh, Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, a year later, we get into Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. And yes, I, I did look a, up a lot of these timelines to make sure my facts were correct, and I was, I was right. Uh, now, these two aren't really uh, in chronological order anymore, but I'm adding them to the timeline just for fun, and to anybody who uh, wants to. Uh, e the Ewok Adventure Caravan of Courage and... Um, Ewoks the Battle for Endor. Now, some people say they're no longer canon, but the way I look at it is there's nothing that contradicts that it can't because we never go back to Endor after Return of the Jedi. And some people would say that they actually take place before, but nothing really indicates that there was human civilization that landed on Endor before or after, so it doesn't really matter. I think you can put them here and there's a detail in Battle for Endor, uh, <laughs> one of the Ewoks start talking, uh, that uh, they don't speak English in Return of the Jedi, so it just makes sense that maybe the humans that visit them in these movies would eventually teach one of the Ewoks at least how to speak English. So that's why I put the Ewok TV movies here, but they are pretty bad, I'm not going to lie, and you might want to avoid them. But if, just in case you're curious of what these Ewok movies were like, they were made for TV, so they're very low budget. Uh, they're pretty hard to sit through, but go for it if you really want to. <laughs> uh, we then get into The Mandalorian. I have Season 1 here, but I should have taken that off. Uh, but yes, Mandalorian Season 1 takes place uh, 10 years after uh, the, uh, the original film. I think that was 7 years after Return of the Jedi I read, so... And that's why it's placed here. We then move more into the future, uh, 34 years after the Battle of the Avid, um, Star Wars Resistance. Now, Star Wars Resistance Season 1, uh, they say, takes place before The Force Awakens. Uh, so that's where you would go here, The Force Awakens. And then right after that, just like Rogue One and A New Hope, The Force Awakens leads right into Star Wars Episode Eight. The Last Jedi, and then from what I heard, I don't know if this is true because I haven't seen Star Wars Resistance, I heard the second season of Star Wars Resistance takes place after The Last Jedi and before our final film, uh, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, Episode 9, the one that completes the Star Wars saga, or the Skywalker saga anyways, uh, because Star Wars will continue... Uh, with other shows and movies, uh, we just got an announcement that Taika Waititi is going to direct a movie, so who knows where that will fall on the timeline. So there you guys have it. That's the complete uh, Star Wars timeline. As you can see, the prequels are right there. Uh, then we got the uh, originals more or less in the middle, along with the Ewoks and Mandalorian. Uh, and then obviously all the way in the back here, uh, we have the sequel trilogy. So I hope that helps. 
Um, if not, I apologize. Uh, but I think the posters really help make it clear which ones are which movies. I think I made it pretty clear. I have the words there and everything. Come on. Uh, give me a break. And uh, so go out. If you've never seen Star Wars before, like I said, watch the originals first. I think those ones should be seen first if you've never seen Star Wars before. And then you can do the chronological order thing afterwards if you want. Because uh, there's some things in the, the originals... You know, they made the franchise what it is for a reason. And if you love film, uh, there's a reason why the, the, those three films influenced a lot of people in Hollywood So, uh, who are working in the industry. So with that being said, I hope this you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take care.